oh my gosh, I just shot this intro like four times and it all went poorly. And then I looked down and I wasn't recording anyway. So do it that way, you will. <laughs> what is up guys? Welcome back. If you have been here since yawn 2019, you might remember clean routine 2019 or remember me mentioning it. I did, I tried a lot of clean beauty in 2019. We focused entirely on brands that self-identified as clean beauty. And one of those brands that got a great review from me at the time was one called Saint Cosmetics. But at the time, they really didn't have much and you had to buy it from their website. And even then they did not have my shade yet. I had ended up ordering the fairest shade that they had. And when it was like a hilarious mismatch, I was like, I need to return this. And they were like, actually we're coming out with a fairer shade. Do you just want us to send it to you? And I was like, yeah, that'd be awesome. And not even in like an influencer capacity. They were just like, here, this is probably going to be better for you. And it was, it was a great match at the time. So, they reached out to me recently and they were like, can we send you some stuff? This is not sponsored or anything, but they did just like send me a full face of Saint Cosmetics as it exists right now. They're on Credo now. They are all like silicone and talc free. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure. At least that was the claim at the time, which makes the performance of these products even more remarkable because they're very, very beautiful. And if I'm gonna go ahead and spoil it here, but it's kind of a unique situation because I have already reviewed them and I'm kind of coming back around to them, you're gonna see that these are not clean beauty aesthetic type products, not all together. So when you get a full face of Saint Cosmetics on, like it's a full beat and it's kind of hard to get away from that if you're only using Saint Cosmetics, but each one stands alone in its pigmentation in a way that could be a really great addition to a routine that is not all Saint Cosmetics if that's not your vibe, you know? So hopefully you're going to see that through the demonstration and everything. We're gonna put it on my face. And it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful makeup. But I do invite you as we go through to look at the performance of each product individually because each one of these products has something unique about the formulation. It doesn't have to be a full face of Saint Cosmetics in a given day. So I'm gonna move you all in. And hopefully everything that I just said is what will come through visually. So let's jump in. Let's jump in. <laughs> Oh God, I just can't get away from being an idiot. Wait, am I already moved in? <laughs> they did initially send me, whoopsies, vanilla, but they followed up and they were like, hey, how's it going? And I was like, no, well, the foundation's a little bit too dark. And they were like, well, let us send you alabaster. Alabaster was my shade the last time. So, oh, come on. I'm actually gonna kind of combine both because I feel like the vanilla shade is still a pretty nice, it's like if I were doing a full face of Fenty body sauce. Maybe I'll swatch those next to each other because I think that they're like a really similar color. Anyway, squish, squish. We're gonna do that. I'm gonna apply this with my seamless foundation buffing brush from Beauty Pie. See? So that's pretty light. I had been getting tons and tons and tons of peels in 2019, really healing my skin. So that matched me pretty well then, but I do need just a little bit of deepening here. So there you see vanilla versus alabaster. And just for the sake of science here, vanilla is still quite a bit lighter than the body sauce from Fenty, which is the darkest one there. But I'm not gonna use that, just for clarity's sake. So there we have them mixed together. And I do end up with much closer to my shade. If I had just used vanilla, it would have been okay because their concealer does a good job of balancing it back out anyway. So not anything tragic. Also, there was a funny little, I guess, episode on my channel at one point where I was kind of trying to, I don't remember what the premise of the video was. I think it was like makeup that I had forgotten about that I really liked or whatever. And one of the products was uh, the concealer from Saint, except I had had it since 2019 and I think it was this year that I was using it. And I opened it and I was like, uh, that doesn't really smell quite right. <laughs> I used it anyway and everyone was like devastated in my comments. It is a really, really good formula. And I didn't have any kind of reaction. So I'm getting this really, really sheer right now, but it, it wants to build. It wants to cover, which is kind of nice. There are so few full coverage clean beauty foundations that have a long wearing formula and don't have silicones in them. Because I mean, look at that. That really, really camouflages like veins and stuff. And like I said, I could build it up, but you're gonna also see the concealer has quite a bit of coverage and even the powder products have 
a blurring effect that does build coverage. But I do love that even though I feel like this has like almost like a satin finish, satin matte kind of, still a little bit light, isn't it? It's okay though. That it's, it kind of has its own dry down in a really beautiful way. I popped out way too much product demonstrating that for you guys. I would say total you'd probably need about a pump and a half to do what I just did. So that's the foundation. I have the shade Alabaster here in the concealer and it is also quite lovely. But yeah, every time I have put this on, I end up looking glam in a good way. And it's a very comfortable face of makeup, but I think I always end up surprised by how much coverage I end up with. For a lot of people, that's not really full coverage. For the clean beauty aesthetic, it definitely is. It's kind of up there with like Lawless. Oh, do you guys remember when Lawless put out a concealer and then they like immediately pulled it and everyone hated it? I liked it. I ordered two of them. Good times back in 2019. Oh, 2019 when we were just young and innocent. So yeah, because I ended up a little bit light, uh, you can sort of see the texture there. And I just don't, necessarily think that like my skin is the ideal skin type for this foundation but to be fair like every other clean beauty foundation is made for dry skin i have dry skin i feel like every foundation in the clean beauty space is pretty much designed for me so it's like can i really be mad that one wasn't you know it's kind of a good thing so in lieu of powdering everything because it's gonna get plenty I'm going to start in with our friends here. So they sent me four of these compacts and they all look the same, but they're all, they're all quite different. So I have in absolutely no order whatsoever. This blush, it's like they really watch my content because that is like the most me blush. Like, look at that. That is the color of my lips. This is a shade Frosé, generous pan size, nice heavy package. I like it a lot. The next is 24K Glow. And this is a highlighter that I think, I'm not sure how many shades they have in any of these, but this looks very like universal in the sense that it is just about the darkest that I can get away with wearing in a highlighter before it's like darker than my skin. But it would probably work pretty well for a lot of people because it is kind of neutral to warm. It's not icy. Then we have Ivory, which is a setting powder, I think. Yes, this is a pressed powder, but it's almost the color of my Charlotte Tilbury bronzer because that bronzer is so fair. So it kind of functions like that. Like it's a little bit too dark for me, but it works really well for I don't know, keeping me from having that really, really like over brightened under eye. So I will probably use like a different powder if I have to powder, but this is a really, really good step for deepening just a little bit. So I don't end up like super, super high contrast. It's kind of a newer technique that I've been using lately, but it works really well. And then I have Sun Kiss. This is the Radiant Radiance Finish Bronzing Powder. This is made in Canada. I think this whole brand is Canadian. And that's actually just a hair darker and more rosy than my Charlotte Tilbs. So, Iga Uga, Oogie Badoogie, Ha, Wooba, Nah, oh my goodness, oh my god, help. Okay, I guess the first thing I'll do is just set with a little bit of this on my cheeks before I go in with like the cheek products so that it doesn't like grab really bad. But these are all, I mean, with the exception of the highlighter, they're all very matte and I do feel like they add coverage. And so you're gonna see just the, the glam happen, I guess. Am I, I don't even know if I'm making sense, but you'll see the coverage build. I feel like I just keep repeating the same words. But do you see how that's almost a bronzer? It's a little darker than my skin tone, but I think it works really well. Just as long as I don't bring it like right to my neck, like I could even put it like here as a gentle bronze or contour, but like not as a setting powder. I don't even know if that really makes sense. Not a traditional setting powder. Although <laughs> I took my little youngin over to Target yesterday and look what they had one of the brand new Bio Base Bake Brightener, which they have just <laughs> retitled Super Powder from Well People. So I picked it up, like it's in the new packaging and everything. 
and we will try it today and see if it is as good as or comparable or even better than the old one. And I'm sorry to bury the lead. There are definitely gonna be people who ask me about that later on. They're gonna be like, did you ever end up trying? Cause they like didn't end up watching this video. I'll have to direct them back here. All right, bronzing. Here we go. She means business. It doesn't stamp, but it goes on quick. And they really all feel like they're coming at it from the same powder, like base powder formula. And it's like they're all setting powders, just pigmented setting powders. And so that kind of does end up, I don't wanna say looking cakey, but looking made up. You see how like, whoa, <laughs> whoa, that happened quickly. And I'm like really trying to like not dip my brush very hard. So the next thing I'm going to use is that Frosé blush. I'm going to put this pretty high. Look at how pigmented that is. I'm gonna put this up pretty high because I do find that when I have this much warmth on my cheeks, it does tend to kind of drag them down. I'll need to kind of brighten underneath a little bit because I find that it just kind of, like it gives the illusion of being a little bit jowly almost. Hmm, getting a little bit of stamping. Yeah, this is a not messing around pigmentation level. But it just keeps blurring and blurring and blurring, you know? Like as you put it on, you're just getting more and more and more of this like blurred situation. But like, it, for me it tops out, you know? It's like I have to have a setting mist or it's just gonna look really made up. And then we have 24K. Glow. I'm gonna use a smaller brush for this. My little Thrive highlighter brush here. And I'm going to go so gently here. But don't get me wrong, like when I get done doing all of this Saint Cosmetics to my face, and I get it all balanced out and sprayed and I get the eyes on and stuff. My husband loves it because I look really tan at the end of it. And he always, he always just thinks I look better tan, I guess. Okay, let's use this because this is very typically how I would use this product in its previous iteration is to have it as a mixing medium. When I have things that I want to blend together and it sort of needs to be picked up in order to do so, you know, it like might be a little bit heavy or a little bit clunky looking. This is an amazing, this again, it was called the Bio Base Baked Brightener and now it is called the Super Powder Brightening Powder and it comes in like shades and stuff. I don't know how many shades there were before, but I, it comes in shades and stuff. It is really, really great for not highlighting necessarily, or at least that's how it was, but more so just giving you this really beautiful blurred finish that brightens, which is, I, I need some brightening right now. I'm looking a little bit, see, look at what that does. It just blurs it. Ah, like this side versus this side. That is neat. When your skin just needs uh, a little soft focus. <laughs> oh, and it's one of those things that even though, yeah, it looks like it's performing miracles on camera, it doesn't look weird in person. It doesn't look Tin Man in person, which can happen with products like this, but it just, tones everything down a notch and sort of like blends it a little. I I got it a little too close to my like nose, but we will try and alleviate that later <laughs> right now. I feel like the more I'm building this, the more chance I have, I'm, I'm flying too close to the sun. It, it could get mucky and I don't want that to happen. Okay, they sent me this. This is the eyeshadow palette in Blessed in Burgundy. It comes with a little brush. I'm gonna take this out just for the sake of being able to show it to you guys. The Burgundy claim here, I guess pertains to this one right here, which I think is interesting because it doesn't strike me as particularly Burgundy, but it actually leans pretty cool. So the other thing about this that 
is surprising is actually like, maybe it's just my predisposition to think that all clean beauty eyeshadow formulas are going to be like low pigment. But I look at that and I think that it's going to be something that kind of is just a wash, right? Or it's gonna like come off pretty light and a little bit maybe chalky on my skin. No siri bobtail. No, 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 no. It is really, really pigmented in a beautiful way. They're just very, very pure colors. I'm going to start by just kind of setting everything with the white because otherwise I could end up with a stamping situation. I just wanna be careful here. And that's just gonna give me a more even canvas. Okay, next I'm gonna go in with this middle shade right here. It's like this really, really pretty kind of like cool, cool taupe. The formula is not emollient necessarily. Like it's not, super dusty, but I wouldn't say it's got like a a cream effect to it. It still does feel very much like a, just a high quality powder eyeshadow, but like once she's down, it really builds fast. Their powder formula builds really, really fast. Is it, I guess the best way for me to describe it is it pulls all of the pigment off the brush quickly. You know, it's like I put it down and I feel like I have to reload the brush because the pigment, like, it goes down where you put it and then you run out of product. And I, it's not a complaint. I just have to try and figure out ways to communicate these things because I try so many things. I don't want to just be like, yep, it's an eyeshadow, <laughs> you know? So I'm doing a little better job on this eye of spreading it out more evenly. And I could absolutely just mix it with the white. I just have to think a little bit differently to do that. You know what I mean? Because they don't want to wash and sheer out as easily as some other shadows. Like you work with like a Pat McGrath shadow, you can just put it down in the general area that you think you want to put it. And then you can just, you know, take whatever brush and just kind of wave it on it. It'll just sort of blend itself, you know? It's magic. Um, whereas, you know, there are just other ones that you have to be a little more deliberate about, about your placement. Oh, so that was hyperbole, just to be clear. I know it doesn't always come across, but like, that's still really stinking pretty. That's still really, really everyday wearable. And the thing that I love to talk about, which is it's a believable shadow because it's the right color for me. Like that's a contour I could use on my whole face. In fact, it might be a little too cool to even do that. It might be a little too green. So that's good news for some people. All right, so I really dig this shade right here. This is the like, the one shimmery dark color, I guess. It's the only shimmery shade in the palette and it's not even like super duper shimmery. It just has like a, a little bit of, like a tiny bit of a foil effect. So I'm gonna put that all over my lid. Oh, also something that I really wanted to mention was, you know, I follow them on Instagram, I have for ages, and they had a beautiful few pictures of Miss Catherine O'Hara wearing some of their makeup. Oh my God. I just need to take a moment and talk about how much I love Catherine O'Hara, okay? Talk about a crowd pleaser. You know, if you watch Shit's Creek, that was the first time I had heard from her in a while, you know, in a memorable while. But if you're gonna come back, Moira Rose is the way to come back. <laughs> and I just really appreciate, even like in her little commercials and everything she's been doing lately, that she's just experiencing a bit of a renaissance because we, as millennials, like she's always had a special place in our hearts and she's just an absolute delight. One of my friends uh, is like, well, actually I have a lot of friends who are movie buffs, but one of my friends, you know, majored in film and everything. She went off one day about how stupid it is that the Academy does not acknowledge comedies because someone like Catherine O'Hara would have multiple Oscars. And uh, I was like, that's such a brilliant observation. I have never even thought about that before. But yeah, it's just, it's silly that someone like her has to like wait around to be in a show to get like an Emmy or has to go get, I don't know, does she have a Tony or anything like that? I'm not sure. But you know, she was incredible in all of the Christopher Guest movies. And she was just absolutely unbelievable in, in Schitt's Creek. I mean, the woman is a genius. She is so stinking hilarious and she's so creative and beautiful and yeah, 
big fan of Katherine O'Hara, and I'm glad that she is finally regaining popularity and stepping back, stepping back into the sp the spotlight she so rightly deserves. I can only fall into the accent by accident. Like, I can't just do the Moira Rose accent, unfortunately. It has to be like certain words. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of that same shade on kind of a flat brush that's too big to be doing what I'm doing with it, but who cares? And I'm gonna go, uh -huh. yeah, I really enjoy this satin shimmer formula. It's a really, really nice color. It is very, very versatile. It's probably the most cooperative. I mean, that tends to be what happens is that shimmers are gonna be a little more cooperative. It reminds me a lot of the Well People one, except not dusty. Like the Well People ones are really, really easy to work with, but they do feel a little bit more drugstore. They're just drier, like all across the board. The Well People stuff is less emollient. This has a little bit more stick to it, you know, and a lot more pigment. And that's why I always talk about Well People being so user-friendly, like beginner-friendly is because it doesn't sneak up on you. All right, I'm gonna take a pencil brush. Something was sacrificed. And I'm gonna go on the inner corner here. And you can see that 24 karat glow is quite warm. And we got some, we got some fallout, but that's okay. But I just wanted to demo that shade in a place where I would typically exaggerate my highlighter so you can see. And I'm just gonna put that kind of right here. It's not light enough for me to use it right under my brow bone. But long wearing, yes. That is typically the trade-off. There are exceptions like Pat McGrath, which has some kind of magic woven into it. But typically when you are working with a shadow that has a little bit more stick to it, that makes it sometimes more challenging to blend, that tends to speak to longer wear time. That's the case with Thrive, definitely. And the makeup by Mario that I love is still a little bit sticky, like it kind of grips a little bit. And I feel like it also somehow bridges the gap of being really, really blendable, but also really long wearing, but there is some grip to it. Um, should we go for the drama? Because this is called Blessed in Burgundy. So, uh, you know, I guess I have to use the burgundy, right? I'm just gonna go in the typical area outer. I'm the only one home. So when I hear a strange sound, I'm just like, what are the cats doing? Yeah. I might have to mix that with the shimmer to get the spreadability that I want. Because it wants to stomp. See, look at it. Uh, I don't like that, that stamp that it made. So I'm just gonna keep applying it. That'll probably help khaki. So I'm mixing it with the shimmery brown to try and get a little bit more of a gradual blend, but I feel like it really like soaked, my eye like soaked that color up. It is a very unique formula for sure. But yeah. On the user friendliness scale, there's definitely, there's definitely a learning curve here. Let's do some brows. In fact, I don't have any brow or eyeliner or mascara from them. So I will do those things and I will come right back and we will talk about lips. Cause they sent me a couple of lip products. Okay. I have the rest of my eyes on here now. I do feel like it needs a little bit of something slightly brighter on the cheeks and I wanna go with something, something Milani Luminoso. <laughs> I want something with a little bit of sheen to it and that's not going to increase the coverage. You know, I just want a little bit of difference in texture. I haven't done a setting mist yet either. I also didn't end up doing a contour, like a, you know, a true contour because I ended up with like two bronzers. So, and then I'm going to go in with my setting mist right at the end. I'm still waiting for my lashes to dry. So we're going to talk about a couple of lip colors here that they sent me. Hello? Where's the pink one? What does one do with things? Y'all, they sent me a pink lip gloss and that's fine. We're gonna go with the lipstick today. I wouldn't have been able to wear both of them anyway because they're both pigmented. So here we have, hello, the shade Paris. It smells like cosmetics. There's no scent to it, which could be a good thing for you, but it smells like cosmetics to me. Wow. Great color, but like really 
really stiff. In fact, I'm not sure that I want to apply more, more than I just want to like work it in because it's so stiff that it kind of feels like it's gonna dry down and lock down, you know? Like the more I put on, the more really bold it's gonna look. I probably should have done a lip liner. It's gone though. Like what a funky consistency how how light it is on my on my lips. I'm gonna lip line here. Super crisp lip line. You know what I always say, blur, blur, blur. <laughs> so that's a lot. That's just a lot. Okay, so we will let the Mac Fix Plus do its job, which I heard Wayne Goss say this, and he was saying it almost like a bad thing. But what makeup spray really does is it like melts your makeup a little bit. It actually removes some of it, dissolves some of it. And um, I think that's a good thing. Let's just look online here and I'll tell you the prices of all of these things. Cause this is definitely not an inexpensive clean beauty line. They do have a boxing day special that they're running right now for 30% off. Flawless Radiance Skincare Foundation is 54 doll hairs. I believe that was the same price as when I bought it two years ago. It says free from parabens, petrochemicals, nanoparticles, sulfates, silicone, PEGs, phthalates, mineral oil, triclosan, petrolatum, coal tar, artificial preservatives, and synthetic fragrances. I think that that goes for everything, but I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure none of this stuff has silicones in it. And so that's, again, what I think makes these formulas really remarkable. This foundation is like a filter in a bottle and will provide camera worthy skin that will have all your friends begging to be let in on your secret. It will treat your skin to a cocktail of superstar ingredients while leaving it dewy with a perfect, perfectly airbrushed finish. That is something that I kind of wondered was in, wondered if it was intentional is the fact that it does, I guess, you know, I use a makeup spray, like a finishing spray, which is going to make it a little bit dewy anyway. What is stuck to me? Cat hair, get off of me. Brutal. But the fact that it kind of goes dewy a little bit, I was wondering if I was like, am I oily? Or is this just what matte foundations do? It's that they're kind of saying that it's like both satin, like airbrushed and also a little bit dewy, which it kind of is. It's weird. Anti-aging rosehip oil will keep your skin beautifully youthful and skin brightening. Cockadoo plum will take your glow to the next level. It has a lot of shades, some very interesting undertones, and I have absolutely no idea looking right at it whether it's like a good shade range. I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea. Like it goes deep, but I do not know if those deep tones really run the gamut. Oh, but they do have a shade between the two that I have. So when I mix together alabaster and vanilla, they have porcelain right there in the middle. So that might've been a better shade for me, but it does look a little bit green in comparison. So I think mixing those two actually worked probably better. Anyway, lightweight, buildable, all day wear. It is long wearing, although it wears off instead of wearing in because it's not a skin mimicking texture. So the amount of makeup that I end up with on my face, I think has a lot to do with that too. It's just going to show if it comes off, you're gonna be able to tell because it's just a more perfected kind of look. Skincare, makeup, ingredients, improve complexion, cruelty-free, gluten-free, and fragrance-free. I really appreciate the fragrance-free. Skin Perfecting On The Go Concealer is $32, and it comes in 12 shades, also free of silicone and everything that I just mentioned. Our hybrid non-toxic mm, skincare concealer will fight imperfections all day long while covering them up so you can feel confident to rock a flawless, smooth, airbrushed complexion. Anti-aging and brightening moisturizes and regenerates. This is a beautiful concealer. Out of everything that's on my face right now, I would say the concealer translates best to my routine. Not that I don't like the other things, but if I had to stack rank them, this is the one that just is a standout, you know, that I'm gonna reach for, for like multiple different situations. And I just like to have an option to be able to offer to people that's silicone free, especially in a freaking concealer. This one ticks all the boxes in terms of what you want and will stay put all day while working overtime as an anti-aging treatment. So I always say this, if you're gonna charge a premium price for makeup, it needs to translate not just to the, the like look and the wear of the formula, 
but a lot of times too, like skincare ingredients. I will say the packaging hasn't really changed since the last time that I tried it and some of it feels more luxurious than other things. Actually, the compacts are different. The old compacts looked like this and they have this Saint label on them that's like tape, because tape, it's like a sticker because I'm pretty sure they're kind of repurposing the last of like old components that they had, but this is a, a new component. You know, actually got the Saint like printed on it and this does feel a lot more luxurious. But everything is plastic. I believe this is, I mean, would you call that an airless pump? It's just got the, you know what I mean? The little plunger at the bottom. And uh, this is all plastic, even though it's got, you know, the gold kind of finish to it. Uh, Rosehip oil, cockadoo plum. So that's kind of, I guess, their sort of proprietary combo. The, whoa, they have a hydrating wet and dry powder foundation that is $45. That's, I don't think that's what I have. I have the Radiance Finish Pressed Powder. The Velvet Lip Cream is $28. That's actually a pretty good price for like, uh, luxury lipstick and this is a funky formula like I like it it's comfortable so um, yeah that's $28 and it comes in a menagerie of really really beautiful shades oh cool they do foundation samples that's brilliant choose any three foundation samples what's the price for doing that seven dollars for the mini foundation samples radiance finish pressed powder is not, like that shouldn't be the same thing as the hydrating wet and dry powder foundation, but I don't see the pressed powder on here. Apparently this is a powder foundation or they've swapped them. I'm not totally sure, but like the title of this product, the pressed powder does not exist on here. It says hydrating wet and dry powder foundation. So that might be why I end up looking like I'm wearing so much makeup, but even without that, I have used all these things without that, the blush, and the bronzer still have that same powder formula. The bronzing powder is $40. The Radiance Finish Blush is $35. The highlighting powder is $37. Women Supporting Women, our passion for supporting women runs deep. Not only do we wish to help women look at their best on the outside, but to feel their best on the inside by purchasing our products, you are helping to with each purchase of St. Cosmetics. 2% helps to, goes to helping abused women and children locally at Interval House here in Canada. That is beautiful. Beautiful. That's lovely. Uh, Joanna Montesano, uh, founder and CEO, starting my own cosmetics line was the natural next step in a life filled with vibrant color and family traditions that have now been brought to life through my non-toxic makeup company. I've always known a holistic approach to beauty, treating the internal to the external body as a connected part. My grandmother taught me the beautiful and absolutely essential ritual of self-care, self-nurturing, and healing oneself with ingredients straight from Mother Earth, using plants and natural ingredients to not only improve skin, but to boost health too. Took the knowledge I had gleaned through my upbringing and combined all these personal powerful lessons and set out to create an innovative experience without compromising health or product performance. My goal was to create quality driven products that are luxurious yet without the nasty toxins products that beauty aficionados are excited to reach for, leave the skin glowing and gorgeous, infused with powerful antioxidants that work their magic all day long and are ideal for even the most sensitive skinned individuals like myself. If you've spent ages looking for a non-toxic brand that actually provides the results you're after, then we are so happy to find yourself here. Um, I'm gonna move y'all out for the first time in the whole video. And I'm gonna put something different on my lips real quick because this is a lot, this is a lot better. That really just <laughs> casts it in a totally new light. I always used to say putting on a very glossy lip makes everything else look glossy by association. Either way. I'm ready to relay to you guys my final thoughts. So like I said, this is a slightly unusual situation because I had tried this brand. And I mean, I guess, you know, as you're a YouTuber for a long time, you're bound to revisit brands, right? But it was unique in the sense that they were very within the scope of my clean beauty era on my channel, the, you know, my year of, of trying clean beauty. And now, I've moved very far away from that. So I'm going to obviously be reviewing this as, as current me, as 2021 me, with the preferences and the standards and the experience that I have now. And I will definitely say, like, clean beauty or not, these are really, really high performing formulas. Whether they're necessarily my taste as far as the aesthetic is concerned, it, you know, kind of is a product to product thing. I'll get into that. But like 
for being silicone free and non-toxic, which is another thing that I will talk about in a second, there doesn't feel like there's any sacrifice here as far as performance. Like the formulas are gorgeous and it's really, really pretty long wearing makeup. And it does lend itself to me kind of like the way that she said it's, you know, for a flawless, like photographable thing almost. That's kind of what you're gonna get with this. It definitely has that better than real life kind of vibe. Like you're probably looking at it going, I don't know, Khaki, like your cheeks aren't blended that well, but like it looks snatched, like it looks good. It's a little much in person. And that's impossible to be able to kind of show you guys as I'm sitting here under these lights on camera. But for me, like, yeah, I'm gonna wear this the rest of the day. I don't care. But it's a little bit much altogether as it looks in person because it's just a little surreal, you know? Like it's so, so, so ultra blurred. I don't think it's not pretty, but I think it's coming really close to looking a little cakey on me. Now I wanna speak individually about each of these products. So first and foremost, if you are looking for a clean beauty, with, you know, no silicones. I think that that, regardless of their claim as to non-toxic, clean, whatever they wanna call it, if you're looking for a foundation that doesn't have silicones in it, it can be really hard to find and it can be really hard to find one that performs well and isn't like a skin tint. You know, there's tons of this kind of thing out there. Like, I love this product, I do. But the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint is, it's very much a super serum skin tint. It's got like a, you know, a, a 3.5 on my arbitrary scale of coverage. And this gets almost like a nine on coverage from me. And I think it's better than like the, the like lawless foundation that is pretty and kind of going for the same thing, but this has better ingredients, is about the same price and is, I just think it performs better. It, it's longer wearing, it has a prettier hybrid finish. Like yeah, it's surreal. Yeah, it's got a little bit more kind of like mattification, satinification than I would love. But at the same time, if I'm going to recommend something to someone whose specifications are like, I need something that's going to be kind to my skin and I'm so sick of everything just kind of being like a dewy glaze, I need something long wearing, I'm going to point them in the direction of this foundation because I, I really believe in it. And it is, it does photograph beautifully. So it's very high performance kind of long wearing and just not really what you expect going into the clean beauty space. But I think that that's a reason to give it a second look, you know? And the concealer, again, like a concealer is something that I do often want coverage from, and it is silicone free, and it is hydrating and long wearing, and they both have these really great, like the rosehip oil and the cockadoo plum and everything in them. My skin feels happy and nourished wearing these. I really believe and like give my full endorsement with all of the actual aesthetic in mind, you know what I mean? If this is what you're going for, these absolutely get a stamp of approval from me in terms of their formulation. They are high performing. I do not feel like there are any sacrifices happening here. Like it's really, really beautiful. If you can find your shade, but I do also really like that they do the foundation shade sample pack. Moving into the powders. I am a little bit confused just because I have a setting powder. There's no setting powder on the website. There is a powder foundation which if I had seen that as the title on this, I might have tried to wear it differently or not put it with this face of makeup necessarily. It's a little bit surprising. I'm not really sure if I used it right, but all of these powders, the color ones, you know, not the uh, highlighter, they all have this blurring finish on them that like I said, it can look made up really fast. Like if you're layering these, but I have talked to at least one of you guys in the comments about, where did she go? Frosé, this is a phenomenal thing to have in your collection. I, if it were me, if I had my druthers, like if I could customize it, I would like mix these two formulas together, the well people with it, so that it just spread more evenly and had like a little bit more play in the formula because I do feel like it's a little bit like a very, very tiny margin for error, but what an exceptional shade and especially for people who have deeper skin tones than me, this is actually gonna show up on you, which is phenomenal. Like that's a really, really cool thing to know that you can count on their stuff to be so pigmented and not like in a really exaggerated way, but just in a really like rich, high quality way. So again, it's more just bearing in mind that that's what you'd be getting and picking and choosing which parts of your routine you would want to behave that way. Because for me, I would only want every single step of my routine to behave that way if I were going 
going to be photographed at an event. It's just so ultra perfected, but it's nice to know you can count on products to give you a very, very perfected look. I like the eyeshadow palette. I do feel like it is not super duper beginner friendly. I feel like it kind of does almost like what the Natasha Denona ones do, where it grips on the skin so hard that if, if you're not careful, you can end up with like a spot that you can't really blend out. It's avoidable in the sense that I could always mix any of the mattes in with either a lighter shade to blend it or uh, the more shimmery shade to you know give it a little bit more play but you kind of have to shift your mindset or I have to shift my mindset going into using this because it behaves differently from other things in my collection, that's all. But it's super, super pigmented. The colors are really nuanced and beautiful. And I really like the look that it gave me. Again, this is something that's going to be impactful from a distance. It's going to photograph really beautifully. It gives you a really lovely finish on the skin. And I like that even though, you know, it does have like a shimmer and a like satin in here, neither of them is particularly super, super ultra reflective. Like there's no glitter. And so pretty much any skin maturity is going to like how that looks. You know, it's not going to like s suddenly just add like a highlighted effect to all of the like creases and stuff on your eyes. I find it to be blurring, which is exactly what I want on my eyes. I would just say that in terms of like beginner friendly, probably not. Like if you are a brand new beginner and you're really trying to get into like a clean beauty eyeshadow formula, go well people. It's actually pretty comparable. I was like wondering why this felt so familiar, but uh, this one is going to be very warm and this one's a little bit cooler, but super, super similar in their, you know, their overall concept here. Um, I would definitely recommend this if you're a beginner beginner and this is probably going to frustrate you, but if um, what you want is something that's super, super long wearing, even waterproof probably, and you have a little more patience for blending, you know, and a little bit more of like an understanding of placement on your eyes and stuff like that, then absolutely, totally gorgeous. The lip formula, I feel like I'm kind of, I keep saying the same thing, which is this is an insanely effective formula just not my preference. It's a really gorgeous formula. The way that this goes on, it is like, you put it on, it's, you kind of have to like warm it up to get it started. And to me that says long wearing and also for being again, silicone free, it feels like nothing on your lips and it doesn't suck you dry necessarily. Like I would probably kind of put a balm on top of it to give it a little bit more creamy of a look and a little bit more like supple feeling, but if what you like is kind of a cream matte, like you're getting incredibly consistent color here, a ton of shades and something that is like both long wearing and really, really lightweight on your lips. So I liked that a, a lot, even though it looks like I don't like it because I took it off and that's just because you guys know this about me. I don't go for a bold lip because it takes away from everything else that I have like done on my face. That's all. I just want to look like me. <laughs> It's just my opinion. The only other thing I wanted to touch on in this video is this sort of residual language around non-toxic. I feel like that was something that really, really resonated back in 2019, but now it kind of feels a little dog whistly. Like it's just something that I feel like we've outgrown as a community, even a community that values ingredients and the quality of ingredients or the lack of certain ingredients in their products. I feel like calling like any time, like toxin is just kind of a red flag term for me. I have recognized that there are both brands that are not in the clean beauty space, or I guess they call them so like conscious beauty now, that space that still have really, really great skin friendly ingredients and lack other ingredients that might not be skin friendly kind of thing. You know what I mean? They have clean beauty esque ingredient lists, but don't claim it. And then there are other brands that are in the clean beauty space that still have just as many silicones and everything in them as anything else have fragrances, what have you. And so I find that the word doesn't really mean anything anymore as it pertains to a company's ability to self-identify as clean. You know, they're like, we're clean. It's like, okay, that doesn't mean anything. It, do it did and it had intentions of meaning something, but it doesn't really because no one is adhering to like one specific definition and everybody's skin needs are different. But I do think that it is valuable to point out when something doesn't have silicones in it. I'm not 
a hundred percent sensitive to silicones, but I don't really want a lot of silicones like in my skincare, for example. Like I don't want to like sleep in that. There are people who their skin is incredibly sensitive to silicones. And that's just a really nice thing to know that there's an entire brand that's staying away from that. That's really, really, you know, high quality and high performing. I just kind of feel a little bit excluded by the like non-toxic language there. You know, I feel like that's kind of doing a little bit more exclusion than inclusion when they probably don't mean it to, you know, it's just something that's a little passe now. So yeah, I just kind of wanted to, to state that in case this is my first video that you're watching or something and you're like, see, maybe she only reviews clean beauty or whatever. Like that's my stance on clean beauty in a nutshell is just that like, we have to speak in more specific terms about what we're looking for in a product. And it doesn't necessarily need to be that it like aligns with some kind of like wellness value system in our hearts. There's an aesthetic for that and there are companies for that and things like that. And I think them giving back you know, part of their uh, profits and things like that. Like that speaks to me far more than the term non-toxic. So anyway, guys, I hope that you guys appreciated this. This was a lot of fun for me. Again, I'm gonna wear, I'm still gonna wear this face of makeup for the rest of the day. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And it is very, very bulletproof and long wearing, which I really like. So yeah, if that's what you're looking for, thumbs up. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, <laughs> thumbs up. Um, if you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. And thank you to Saint for finding me again and for sending me these products because they're definitely going to make their way into my everyday routine in a lot of different ways. So yeah, guys, I love you so freaking much. Thank you for 60k. What? 60,000 subscribers? What? As we round out my fourth year here uh, on Khaki Reviews Beauty, Holy macaroni. Um, yeah, I love you guys so, so much. I hope you're having uh, an okay holiday and, uh, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.